Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about form validation. It's actually raining here right now and I don't know if you can hear it in the recording, but if you can, just bear with me. I've got a lot of stuff I want to cover in this video today, so I'm going to try to go rather fast with this. If you have any problems or need to see the source code, I'll have a link in the description to where you can see the source code. So we'll start with our normal boilerplate. We're going to start with our importing our Flutter package. And then we'll do our typical void main run app and my app. Then I'm going to do a stateful widget. And if you're using Android Studio or VS Code, you should be able to just type STFUL, hit tap, and it'll give it to you. So we're going to do material app, scaffold, and app bar. We'll fire that up. All right, so there we go. We have our form validation example. So next in the body, we're going to add a form. We're going to add a column. And here we're going to add four text form fields. The first one is going to be first name. Then I'll copy that. Make this one last name. This one will be email address and this one will be password for the password one we're going to set obscure text equal to true so now if we type over here last name first name email address and password is obstructed for submission we will add a floating action button there we go so this is what it's going to look like we have a first name a last name an email address and a password and we'll submit down here on the submit button but obviously right now it doesn't work so we'll start adding the form validation process in First thing we'll do is up here at the top, we're going to add a global key. And then down here at form, we're gonna add key colon underscore key, which is going to match this key up here in the global key. So next we're gonna create a function called validate text. Inside there for now, I'm just gonna look to make sure it's not empty. And then if it's not empty, I'll just return null. Now, if you have null safety turned on, you may get an error here. You can fix the error by putting a question mark right here after string. However, this was designed to not factor in null safety. Next thing we'll do is under floating action button, we're going to add the on pressed. Inside there, we're going to add if underscore key current state validate. And if it does validate, we're going to print form was submitted successfully. So to give this a test, I'm just going to put inside here validator. And we're going to point to the validate text. We're going to run that. And then I'm gonna hit the button and it says field is required just as we expected it. So let's recap what we've done so far. We have our Flutter material package imported. We call main, which calls run app, which connects to my app. We come down here to my app and my app state. We call the material app, which calls the scaffold. In the scaffold, we add an app bar. And then with the body, we add a form. Inside the form, we have a column. And in the column, we have four text fields. 
The four text fields are first name, last name, email address, and password. Then at the bottom, we have a floating action button. When the floating action button is pressed, it attempts to validate the form, which calls validate text. It checks to see if the field is empty. If it is, it says the field is required. And then if it's not empty, it will say form was submitted successfully. So we've already tried it with the error. I'm gonna type something in there. And there it is, Flutter form was submitted successfully. So I'm going to add this validator validate text also to the last name. And we're going to create a validator for email address now. So we'll go down here below validate text. On this one, we'll also check to see if it's empty. But we're also gonna make sure that it's an email format. We will stick that inside email address up here. So on email address, we'll see email address is required here, but also if I type in something that's not email address format, if I hit save, it says invalid email address format. So we're going to create our validate password function. And as with the others, we're going to make sure it's not empty first. And then like with email address, we're gonna make sure it fits the format. The format is gonna be eight characters or more. It's gonna to have to have at least one uppercase, one number and one symbol in it. And then if it passes everything, once again, we return null. So we'll plug that into password. So now if I hit save, they all say that it's required. If I type in anything in the password, it says password must be at least eight characters, include an uppercase letter, number, and symbol. And then we'll go ahead and try it with everything filled in correctly. This one, I will just type in P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. It's got the capital, it's got a number, and it's got the symbol. So if this works correctly, everything goes away and form was submitted successfully. So this gives you a basic idea of how form validation works. We could clean this up a little bit. For example, once again, we have these text form fields that are taking up a lot of space. I believe it's taken up about 25 lines of code. So we're going to move these into a custom text form field. So we're going to create this custom text form field inside of my app state. So you should be able to go right inside the curly bracket right above your validation forms. So I'm going to create a, a widget called text field. I'm going to look for a string and I'm going to call it label. I'm going to look for true or false and I'm going to assign it to obscure. But if it doesn't exist, I'm going to default it to false. And then I'm going to look for a function called validation. And if it doesn't exist, I'm going to default it to validate text. So I'm going to return a text form field. I'm going to do an input decoration. And then the label text is just going to be set to label. I'm going to set obscure text equal to obscure, which will default to false. 
and then I'm going to set the validator to validation which will default to validate text. Now I can go up here and delete all of this. And simply put text field, first name, text field, last name. This one will have text field email address, but will also have validation of validate email. And then this one will have password, will have obscure set to false, and validation set to validate password. So you'll see it still looks the same. If I press the save button, it still has all of the errors and it looks a lot cleaner. Now we could clean up the validation as well, but we'll save that for another video. For now, let's see the form actually submit the values. So the first thing we're going to do is go up here to the top of my app state and we're going to add a map called form field. Then in the text field widget, we're going to add a call on the unsaved. And last, we're going to delete this line right here and do a for each that cycles through the form field. And I just realized that obscure up here actually needs to be true. Okay, we need to add one last thing. We have to actually save the data. So we're going to add key current state save. All right, now we can give it a full test. So if I just hit save, all the fields are required. If I type in John Smith and just some stuff in here the email address and password show that they're in the wrong format. So I'll give it the legit email address. Hit save. That one's good. And then this one, I'll just type in password, one exclamation point. Hit save. All of that is gone. And when I hit run, you see it all in the console. So let's recap once again what's going on here. We hit main run app and my app. That goes down to a material app that has a scaffold with an app bar and a form in it. Inside the form, we have a column that has first name, last name, email address, and password. Then we have a floating action button. So what happens is when the floating action button is pressed, it goes to validate these fields. So it looks for the validate text, the validate email, and the validate password to make sure they are not empty and to make sure they fit the format that we're looking for. And then if everything validates, it saves it, which is down here in this on saved line, and then prints the results into the console, which we saw here. So what if you wanted the text field to be completely separate so you could use the text field multiple places? We can create a class for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this text field here. And I'm gonna create a text field class that extends the stateless widget right here. So another shortcut is S-T-L-E-S-S. -S. Call that text field. At the very top, we're going to have a label that's a string. A Boolean named obscure. And a function called validation. Inside here, we'll look to receive a label. 
we'll look to receive obscure, which will give a default of false. And we'll look for validation, which will give a default of validate text. Down here, we will return a text form field. We will give it our input decoration. We'll give it the label text of label. Here we'll give it the obscure text of obscure. And the validator of validation. So hot reload isn't going to work currently because we have to correct our fields up here. So where we had a lowercase t for text field before, we need to now make those uppercase. Run it. And form validation should still work, but submission is not going to work currently because we are now outside of my app state with the text field class. So now let's get that form submission working. We're going to go to the same place where we had the original text field function and we're just going to create a callback. We're going to set the form field of var label equal to var value. Now we need to go up here and add callback in here. We'll get some errors at the moment, but we'll fix that in a second. We'll go back into text field. We'll add another function here called callback. We'll add it right here. And then we'll add the callback in the on saved down here into the text form field. So let's walk through it one last time. Main calls run app, calls my app. We go into my app and my app state. We have our material app, our scaffold, which has our app bar in it. Then we have our form in the body, which has four text fields. And then we have our floating action button down here. So when text field is loaded, it comes down here to the text field class and adds a text form field with the label that we sent to it. When they press the submit button, it checks to validate by going to the validation forms checking to make sure they're not empty and checking to make sure that they have the right format. If it validates, it saves, and then it will print the fields to the console. So let's give it one last try. Pressing save gives all the required fields. We'll top in John Smith, nothing, well, okay, correct it, that's fine. Hit save. Both the email address and the password are still the wrong format. So we'll give the email address there, hit save. That one's corrected. We'll type in our password. We'll do a two this time so you can see that it's actually changing. And we look down here and there's the information. So there's a lot more we could do to this. As usual, I'm just trying to keep it basic and hopefully that gives you a good idea of how form validation works. So here's another video you might like. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, please consider subscribing and we'll see you next time.